Catch kids. Welcome to the AR-15 Podcast. This show is for you if you just bought your first AR or if you've been building them for years. There is something we can all do to take our black rifles to the next level. My name is Nick Dooley. Garth Over will be joining us, but uh, his Flintstone-powered computer is having issues. And, uh, but we have a very special guest with us tonight. Tonight, we have Mike from Gideon Optics. But, Greetings, citizens. Yes. And if you're watching this, Mike may look familiar, but he has a, a new place he's been working and they've been putting out some rather amazing stuff over at Gideon. So that is super impressive to me. Thank you, Nick. Yep. So, uh, before we get started, I will do a little bit of housekeeping here. Just uh, last week, we didn't have a show. Uh, sorry about that, guys. We, I wound up having a, uh, they moved my daughter's band concert. So we got to change some schedules around for that. And then when we had rescheduled the show, the guy who is not a firefighter wound up having to go do firefighter things and help fight a grass fire. So, there's one. Yes, Garth Flintstone powered computer is here. Yeah, I'm here finally. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm glad I'm not the only guy who has a uh, industrial shelving with gun crap on it uh, behind me in my backdrop. Oh yeah, dude, those things are so great. That's my so ammo storage. And that, that's it's like I, birds, birds of a feather. <laughs> mine's just out of frame. <laughs> It's, it's sitting beside the Dylan 750. <laughs> Dylan 750 right over there. Yeah. Because everyone needs like three of those. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't. Right. I just bought Nick's. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I only have one, but I definitely need two more. No doubt. Yeah. I, yeah. well, I have that and I have a 550 and I definitely need another 550 because, well, changing primers from large to small just takes way too much time. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've got mine set up for nine mil and it can be set up for 45, but it's so good pumping out nine mil. And we shoot so much nine mil that my 45 ACP dies and the primer stuff and all, it just sits there. It's probably never going to get changed over. Yeah. People I have 45. I do. Cause I'm a junior boomer. I got three 1911s. So <laughs> yeah, I, I still shoot 45 AARP. Hey, you know, that's okay. I have mine. I was actually looking at a new 45. Not or well within the last month, mm. just because I do not have a uh, a standard capacity. Like I'm not sure what you call a 45 that holds more than 15 rounds. Right. I I, I just need one. <laughs> I have these mongoloid hands, and I need a pistol to fill them. Nice. <laughs> but uh, so uh, no, we were off doing that stuff. Now Mike is with Gideon Optics, and Gideon Optics is a for anyone who doesn't know or isn't familiar with them, is a fairly new company. And I know that I've seen, uh, I've, I've got a chance to use some of your products before and have been very impressed with them. And we talked with you a while at SHOT Show and you had some new stuff coming out. And I know Garth was impressed enough to be like, well, these are going to have to have like seven of them. So. Oh yeah, I I was super impressed with some of your optics there, and uh, look forward to getting a couple of them because uh, PCC is I, I saw a couple of those going on my PCCs and they look fantastic. So, yep. But uh, as we get started, Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit? Uh, you know, sing us the saga of Gideon Optics. The saga, the saga of Gideon. So uh, Gideon is a like a a. a I wouldn't say a subsidiary. They are a, 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 a teammate company to JSD supply. So the guys at JSD supply, uh, they, uh, have done pretty well for themselves selling 80% poly 80 frames and the jigs and the, and the drill bits and the small parts and the 
upper parts kits and the slides and all the stuff to make your own not a Glock is what they were what they were really interested in what, how they started out and they they were making a lot of optics ready Glock slides under the Patmos uh, slide brand name. It's really really good Glock slides for the money. Um, and that's where they were when our esteemed and illustrious president signed away in a executive order. Hey, you know that 80% thing where you can make your own gun? We're not going to let you do that anymore. So the guys at JSD Allegedly. were like, well, crap. You know, we we have a good business. We have, uh, we're doing things really well. We don't want to just throw in the sponge and be like, well, you know, the president says we can't do business anymore. So we have to close our doors. So um, they are like, we should we should expand to some other things do a couple of other things do some triggers uh do do optics some other things that aren't necessarily uh gonna get executive ordered away in the next six months or whatever and we'll expand and we'll do those things instead of the 80 percent lowers now we know now the 80 percent thing is tied up in the courts it's going to be tied up in the courts for a long time it might go all the way to supreme court i don't know um the, they they follow that stuff extremely closely, more closely than I do. But um, assuming that the eighty percent stuff will stay gone, um, JSD created the Gideon Gideon Optics brand name to to let's make some kick ass optics that can go on our pistol slides that um, that suit our stuff, that suit the JSD stuff really well, that suit the JSD customer really well. Who is a guy who's pretty savvy about building his own stuff? He's pretty good about with his hands. He's pretty good with, um, you know, understanding how Glocks work and Sig three twenties and all that stuff. You know, so a, a high information uh, customer who's a smart customer, but is also looking for a good deal. He doesn't want to spend, you know, he's not going to spend eleven hundred dollars on a Gucci Glock. You know, like a uh, I mean, he might, but he's, he's, he's not the kind of guy that's going to buy like a shadow systems compensated MR 920 for over a grand when he can build something himself. Right. Yeah. Like how we build our own ARs. I can build a five, five, six AR. I don't have to buy a, you know, uh, an LWRC or whatever, and it's going to do AR stuff just fine. Um, that's kind of, that's kind of where the Gideon optics idea came from. Let's do red dot stuff. Um, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be six hundred dollars like Aimpoint or seven hundred dollars like Trigicon. It can be a couple hundred bucks, and it's going to do red dot stuff just fine on our slides. And our customers are smart enough to figure that out and and to put it all together and and use it. So that was kind of the gist of it. And I had I'd been with Swamp Fox for a few years before that, since twenty nineteen. And Swamp Fox, I still have friends there. I still cheer for them i'm still team swamp fox and i really enjoyed being swamp fox mike that was that was a really cool part of my life but they wanted me to move to denver after covid ended and nobody was quarantining anymore and with, uh, people stopped wearing masks in the public and all that stuff they were like look the company's gotten bigger swamp fox is getting kind of hard to manage um because we had pushed it to be really successful and so they're like we want everybody to move to denver everybody's going to move to denver we're all going to work under one roof and I had gotten married that year in 2022 I had just gotten married and had a couple of kids that I'd married into it's it's her kids from previous marriage. And I'm like, I can't uproot these kids from a really good, really good school situations in Houston, Texas. Um, got the boy is uh, in jazz band. He's a jazz man playing trumpet, kicking ass. He's a hell of a trumpet player. Cool. The girl is, is in community college and is about to get her associate's degree this spring so she's she's 19 and is about to get an associates and she's going to move on and get a full degree i'm like i can't i can't rip up these kids from where they're doing really well and take them to denver plus like denver's turning more and more blue if you look at the politics of it oh yeah colorado's got now they got assault weapons bans crying yep. they made it harder for you to be an instructor they made it harder for you to conceal carry license I'm like, I didn't, I didn't want any of that for me and my family. So I, I was like, I'm just going to stay here in Houston. I'm going to figure something out. I'll, I'll find something. And there were the JSD guys going, Hey, if only we could find somebody who had experience in the optics world, who could do reticles and help us grow a brand. And I'm like, pick me, pick me. I know. That. <laughs> um, so that's how, that's how that went. And so we started Gideon in 2022 in the fall of 2022. It took, 
six months, I would say, a very, very frantic six months to get the first products out, which were all pistol dots. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we sold those for a while and kind of built up the brand name, made sure that things were going the way that we wanted them to go on that front. And then as you guys saw it shot, and I have some here, um, we expanded at SHOT Show this year, just in January. We've got LPVOs on a 1X Prism now. Um, which are which are very very AR friendly and very PCC friendly. I've got my One X Prism on a shotgun actually, um, and it's really freaking good. <laughs> it's so good on the shotgun. <laughs> well, well, I know I'm not shotgun. taking it off. It's zeroed. I'm like I'm gonna have to get another one to put on something else because that that one's staying on the shotgun. The the so, first like, one of your the first well like I I shot some of the handgun optics before, and then uh, your your occluded red dot the or the occluded emitter the, the mailbox whatever you want to call yeah, it yeah 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 the, um, uh, the emitter the uh the the mediator yeah, yeah. the mailbox the, the 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 toaster of death yeah yeah that <laughs> one uh i shot that one for the first time at gun con last year mm -hmm. and that i was actually really impressed by that because i typically do not like mailboxes it's you know, just a me thing and uh i actually really liked that one I know that when you gave your short synopsis, you did leave out the fact that you used to write jokes into uh, manuals for <laughs> primary arms. Yeah, yeah, I was with PA uh, before I was uh, before I was with Swamp Fox. So I, I have uh, not only have I that I write jokes in the user manuals. I actually uh, was that PA or Swamp Fox. I actually redshirted a couple of my friends into the uh, into the into the user manuals. So. Um, <laughs> gave a couple examples like this guy is a cop and so he is going to want to turn his optic off manually because if he think you know if it's a shake and wake optic and every time it, the optic senses movement it's going to turn the reticle the 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 emitter on mm -hmm. then if yep. he's got it you know if he's driving around in his squad car all day then that we'll emitter never is shut burning off. battery for no good reason so yep. so my friend who's a cop he should turn the emitter off and then if he needs to grab the long gun, he has to make ready with the long gun anyway, because he's carrying it cruiser ready and not chambered. So while you're making it, while you're chambering it, and you're checking your safety and you're putting the the uh, the sling on and all that stuff. That's when you activate your dot, you know. So and you know, that's like an actual guy that I know, you know. I put him, I put him in there. So yeah. So nice. no, that is awesome, and uh, so it's it's interesting to me because I'm starting to feel like. Not like an old guy in the industry, because I refuse to say I'm old, even though like you, know, you, you cross that Rubicon and you start to get like, okay, I've I've seen a lot of things start to to come and materialize in the industry. But uh, seeing brands grow mm -hmm. has always been interesting to me, and I've I've got to watch a couple different brands grow. Surprisingly enough, like I'm not going to say that you're the root cause of this, but while you have been supplementary involved with them, I've seen them grow a lot. I kind of got to watch that you know, from the sidelines. We were like, I don't know who this weird guy with a microphone in front of him is, but uh, you know, I I've watched brands and I've seen brands fail and I've seen brands kind of grow and, and keep building. And it's always an interesting arc for me to watch. Yeah. The, the the dungeon at shot show is full of you know if you if you walk if you walk the dungeon at shot show it's like there's all kinds of guys that have like you know taken out a second mortgage on the house to get the you know to get to get to get the seed money for their dream and their dream product and they're cool you know and they're they've got their tiny little booth in the basement and they're like you know here's my thing here's my thing you know somebody noticed me and it's really interesting to see like you kind of have to have a little bit of a poker face because sometimes sometimes I'm like, bro, like nobody asked the question you're trying to answer. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. And you feel bad because the guy's so enthusiastic about it. Like he really thinks he's on to something. And I'm like, nobody, nobody's gonna do that. And then sometimes you'll stumble on a guy and you're like, I want to see where that guy is in two years from now. He's really got something. Somebody's gonna somebody's gonna find him and go. Here's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of investment money. Go do the thing, man. And then you're gonna, you know, like he's gonna have a booth upstairs in a couple of years, you know, because yep. he's really onto something. He's got it figured out. 
You know, yeah. you got both of them. And then there's things where it's you see people who have like a bunch of stuff, and it's like, all right, I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, sweet Hudson that you came out with, and <laughs> oh man, I've been, I'm seeing a lot of YouTube reviews in the. Uh... I've seen a lot of YouTube reviews on my feed. I'm like, come on, guys. Do better for yourself. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, like, I like DD. I like Daniel Defense. Their ARs are great. And that they, they had a bolt action they came out with that was super cool. And, like, they've never had issues before. And I'm like, come on, guys. You can do this. You can you can fix this. Come on. Well, I'm rooting for you. From what I understand, I've got a couple of guys who are reviewing some of their stuff that they've gotten in the last like year, six months to a year. And I think their QC has started to kind of tank. That sucks. But that is it, it's, it's one of the things you do. You get so big, it kind of happens. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's where that, you know, it, it just happens that way. And I've, I've, I've seen many a car company have recalls. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and it could happen to us. Like we got a we got a recall. You know, Gideon Optics could have a recall next week. I, I can't promise you that we can't. Question is, what do you do when it happens? How do you react to it? How do you deal with your customers? You yeah. know, do you do you eat crow? Do you eat a bunch of money? Um do you, you know do you do, do, you, do you apologize? Do you send new product out? Do you stay in communication with angry customers even though they're angry? Or do you say our guns would never go off by themselves if they were dropped? And yeah, just beta test on the customer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, you know. So I don't know. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, karma is a thing, right? Yeah. I, I hope it is. That would be uh, that would be okay. So yeah. now that I have again for like the seventeenth show in a row made sure that Daniel Defense will never be a sponsor ever. Um, <laughs> I guess they're probably not going to hire me either at this point. <laughs> Oh, that, that's okay. I'm the one who said, like, yeah, man, you guys made a cool rail 18 years ago that SOCOM picked up. What have you done since then? And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, moving forward with that. So we know where Gideon came from, and you guys got your start with uh, pistol dots, and then you, you moved on and made a mailbox dot. Made a mailbox. Mm-hmm. And now you have some offerings that you, you kind of mentioned once, but uh, the thing I know Garth is the most excited for, and uh, well, you can't see that I have corrected vision because I have contacts in, mm-hmm. but what I think is probably the fastest growing segment of optics in the, in the optics world is prism optics. Yes. 100%. <laughs> I'm because- glad to hear that. Cause I wonder sometimes. Well, um, yeah, it's because I stigmatisms I'm, are a thing. I'm a, I'm a prism dude, so I'm like, guys, listen, these things are amazing. Like, they have all kinds of stuff going for them, and then people are like, eh, but it doesn't do this and this and this and this and that. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. I, I can't get it to change reticles between a dot, a circle, and a cross, and all of these other things, because I'm going to continuously dis- not just pick a reticle and shoot it. Well, thank God we live in a country where we can own more than one gun because I've <laughs> yeah, got a right. whole safe full of them and four of them have the same optic on them anyway. But it doesn't matter because they're prism optics. You could. <laughs> and I'm with you, Mike. I am I am sold on prisms. I think they are the optic of the future. And now I think you can do realistically anything you want with a, a good prism optic on a, uh, a solid 223 or PCC and have no issues whatsoever. So... So, yeah, so for me, um, <laughs> oh, you'll have to excuse me, but I've jacked up my back uh, doing too many deadlifts, and uh, my back's like, I slipped the disc or something, so if I make old man noises, that's why. It's okay. Uh, uh, hey, can you tell me which way the gym is? Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's over there. Uh. <laughs> there it is. Um, uh. so, so, you know, the stereotypical, uh, you know, um, we're at the, you know, we're at the NRA show. We're at NRAAM, right? I'm going to throw them under the bus, too. Just to throw people under the bus night. Um, but you'll get guys come up and you're like, what's your best scope for an AR-15? And I'm like, well, what are you going to do with the AR-15? 
what where are you going to spend most of your time at shooting at what ranges are you more interested in shooting fast and up close are you trying to reach out and you need something with like a bullet drop compensating reticle or or a reticle that will allow you to to crunch out your numbers and figure out what how you can hit at 500 600 700 yards um is it for home defense is it for competition like what are you going to do with it and you can kind of see like the the little uh um you know like loading icon above their head <laughs> you know, like buffering buffering and then they're like it's an ar-15 what's your best scope um because they haven't thought about yep they haven't, they haven't thought about what, what, what's the use case right so like I got seven ARs in the house. They all have one. Have, one of them has iron sights. The A4 we were talking about before we went live is my yeah. iron sight gun because that's got all the all the iron sight. Uh, uh, what's the what do we call radius? It? The, the radius. radius. Uh, yeah, that twenty inch musket barrel on it. So tons of iron sight <laughs> radius. Love shooting that thing with irons. But the rest of them have different optics on it. It depends on what the roll is and what it's supposed to do. Um, and I got seven of these things. You know, one of them's my wife's, um, and she's got it. She's an LPVO gal. But uh, so the question is like, what do you, you know? Tell me what you're gonna do with this gun first, and then once you tell me what it's for, then if you're honest about telling me what it's for, then I can recommend to you an optic that's going to mm-hmm. mesh in and do the thing that you want to do with your rifle really 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 freaking well and if we can be honest about that with each other we can get really far the problem comes when guys aren't honest with themselves and they're like well i want and i've had this happen more times than i can count well i want something that will hit from a hundred yards to a thousand yards okay cool um all right here we go Right? Yep. <laughs> you know, right? 100%. But but it, does that guy ever shoot his AR at 1,000 yards? Is the Does the bullet have any energy left past 700 yards at all? His 5.56 five, 16-inch six, carbine that he bought? No, he has no chance at 1,000 yards. He's not being honest with himself. He's not being honest with me. You know, he just wants 1,000 is like a really big round number, and he wants to brag to his friends that his rifle can do it. Yep. So like we got to start with an honest conversation about where are we going to spend, where's this rifle going to spend the most of its time? What are we going to do with it? What's the point of it? Right. And the whole piece, the whole reason why I've gone down this tangent is because the prism scopes, the low power one X, two X, three X, four X prism scopes are the right answer more than people want to think they're the right answer. Everybody thinks they need, the one to 10, which I have, and it's awesome. And I love it. Um, and I can pull out and show it to you. Everybody thinks they need that. Cause that's the cool thing. But like, if you're only shooting, if 50 yards is a long shot to you and your range only goes to 50 and it's a home defense gun. Yeah. And when something goes bump in the night, you're going to grab this sucker out of the closet and, and, and face off against two whoever's in the house. You need a one X prism, dude. You don't need an LPVO, you know? No. No. One hundred percent, and yeah. like to that to that vein, um, this is one of those things I'm going to say, and I know we have international listeners who are going to hear this and be like, "Yes, I knew it," and I'm going to piss off some listeners because, well, that's what I do. But uh, by and large, American shooters will have a tendency to over glass. Oh yeah, and this is, no this is me too. A, like oh, guilty uh, as charged. Yeah, hundred percent. Right here, this guy. Like yeah. I, I've got five to twenty-five scopes. I've got you know, I've got like four, you know, four to fourteen or four to sixteen. Oh, yeah. You know, three to eighteens. I've, I've got them all. I have all of like the, the MVPOs. Like last summer, I went on a big MVPO kick because I was like, LPVO is cool. If I need that, I can just do that with like a prism or a dot. MVPOs where it's at. Like I could. That's a do right. all then. And then you get uh, your dual optics set up where you got the 45 degree offset. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Then and they're you, done that. Got the t-shirt. You, you do the whole thing. And uh, as you push through with all that stuff <laughs> and visual length helps. <laughs> visual length <laughs> matters. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, there again, like I, I say that and 
I have routinely engaged targets out. You know, I, I, the very first long range competition I ever shot. I, uh, I know I've told the story before, like when we first started, I shot a long range competition. I did not know what I was doing at all. Yeah. Got and, oh, I shot it with a 20 inch AR with a one to four power vortex viper and uh we shot out to 847 yards yeah that's gonna be a stretch for 4x yeah well on the 847 i had hits i i hit every time i shot at that because that was a full-size zip six silhouette perfect and it was all right, all right like i can i know how to do holds at that and uh the reason I had done that was uh, this would have been in 2012 or 2013. And uh, I had just come back helping a unit get ready to deploy to Afghanistan. And uh, Garth and I's friend Reed was uh, there as his unit going. And I was running a, uh, a 240 machine gun range. And I had someone arguing with me that these targets weren't weren't engaging and weren't working and it was a, a 700 meter target and i looked at reed and i go your m4 on and he goes just shot expert with it so he threw it to me and it had an acog and i had the targets on plumb bob and i reached down and stripped a couple rounds out of a saw belt that was we were alternating between loaded them into a mag and then standing in the foxhole just leaned up on the side and shot and hit the 700 meter target and it bobbed down and i did the seems like it's just fine to me and had that like i'm a super badass moment <laughs> you gotta play it cool like you've been there before i do this all the time did this all the oh, time. Yeah. i couldn't do the do you guys just see that <laughs> <laughs> so then i come home and I walk into our local gun shop and they have a, a sign up for this match. And they go, there's an AR class that goes to 700 yards. And I'm like, oh, too easy. ACOG is 4X. I just shot this. With, I shot that distance with the 4X. I has that on my rifle. Yeah, I'm good to go. And I pulled up to this competition and I literally pulled it out from the back seat of my pickup. Like, flipped the back seat up grabbed it blew some dust off and grabbed like the coyote mags out of my door so and walked up mag. what the what? everything mag that was just like all right hey guys let's do some shooting huh <laughs> <laughs> i did awesome. not i did not come in last i definitely did not come in first but i did not come in last <laughs> <laughs> and uh there was that like, one guy that dq'd yeah no, no, there was a, like, he, <laughs> he didn't DQ, but, uh, like, I don't know what it was, but he couldn't hit anything. <laughs> and I've seen it happen. Well, I've, seen, I've, also, seen guys with, I've seen guys with very, I mean, like, you have to know your rifle. You have to have it zeroed. You have to know your holds. Um, I, I love shooting rifle matches, and I've seen guys with very expensive setups. You know, um, you know, something, something Geisley, something, something Night Force. We're running 77 grain Mark 262 ammo in a match. You know, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I, I wouldn't shoot that up if I could, if I could afford it. That'd be in my stash, you know. Yeah. They're, they're shooting the 77 grain stuff and have no idea where they're hitting because they got all this money sunk into the rifle, but they haven't actually zeroed it and they don't really understand where that particular round hits. They're, they're, they're hitting all of the, buzzwords they got all the brand names but they don't have the knowledge of their setup and you know well, some it, guy some guy with an m p sport 2 something something and uh, you know something on the level of the gideon and 55 grain m193 if he practices if he practices once every couple of weeks all year long he's gonna kick that first guy's ass it's not even gonna be close oh 100 percent, and that's that's one of the things where the, the stage that saved me, like I won a stage on that Ooh. and it wasn't because it was a, a long range stage. It was because like they threw a Mickey into this long range stage and they put golf balls on strings at 50 yards. Oh yeah. 
So everyone right. else had already dialed everything in for way out. And I'm like, oh man, bang, 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 bang. Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like this is this is what this is made for. Yeah. And, <laughs> My lucky day. But That's awesome. No, so when I shot that match, it made me kind of understand. And then I started to look at like really get into some of the shooting. And that's why I, I heard somebody say that Americans over glass. And I realized how true that was just even within my own stuff. And I've said that, you know, if you're really going to start pushing out for distance, it's one X per 100 yards. Realistically is an easy way to look at it. I'm a one X per 100 yards guy for sure. So like, you know, if you give me a three X magnifier behind a red dot, I expect I should be able to hit the 300 yards. Yes. With a red dot, give me a three X magnifier and I can do it with a three X prism scope. Absolutely. I should be good to 300 yards. I would say as distance increases, I tend to want to stack more. So like, so you know, if you just hold that 100 yard per magnification rule, you would think that my one to 10 X would get you out to a thousand yards. Eh. Even with the proper caliber, say you had a 6.5 Creedmoor or something like that, right? I think I'd still, personally, I'm wanting like a like a 3 to 18 or 4 to 16 or something like that at that point. I don't need a 5 to 25, but it wouldn't hurt. Yeah. But it's a, well, so it's a question of what you want to do with it and, and how much penalty you want to pay for for weight and size. If it's, if it's a rifle, like... I've known guys that have uh, 22s that they're doing basically PRL matches with mm-hmm. where the, yep. the, the, the rim fire the, leagues. The NRL and, 22. Yeah. And, and they'll put a 6 to 24 on a 22 because they're only shooting supported. They're never standing up shooting it offhand anyway. It's yeah. on a bipod. It's on, a, it's on sandbags and stuff. So like yeah. you can have a 20 pound, a 20 pound 22 bolt action rifle and they're like, cool. I don't care. You know? Yeah, they're not humping through the mountains with it or anything like that. Yeah. And it's, you know, that's when I say that it's, it's, I agree, Mike, the, the, I'd like to stack more magnification as I go on uh, a one to 10, I'd say is great to six to 800. Yes. And, Which makes it perfect for five, five, six for yeah. me. Like, this, yeah. Yeah. Like I have, I have some longer range five, five, six stuff set up for doing prairie dogs because I'm shooting smaller targets. So yep. I want target identification because uh, you, know, you don't want to shoot an owl instead of a prairie dog, right? <laughs> yeah, and, Parks and Wildlife might have a might have a word with you about that. Yeah, so you know, looking at those things when you push through, but we're starting to we we started that on prisms and then we went down into precision. Yeah, but it's it's, it's I all work, work it backwards. It's you know, it's <laughs> define your role first. Define the role first and then define what what tool fits your need. You know, uh, if you got a if you've got a screw, you need a screwdriver. Hitting it with a hammer is not gonna help you very much. Exactly. And I've actually been going through this myself recently because uh I know that we talked about it on the last show we did. Garth and I both signed up to do the uh the zombies in the heartland pro three gun for for uh, Hornaday this year. So we're shooting that and you know, I have my one to 10 LPVO that is legal in the class. I'm going to shoot. I'm like, all right, do I want to shoot that? But I'm only shooting to 200 yards. And I also know that I'm, I'm not going to shoot on one X. I'm not going to shoot on 10 X. You know, it's, it's where, which, what route do I want to go? But I want to get everything dialed in to start practicing with it to that 200 yard range. And you save some weight and bulk, uh, going with something that's a little bit less, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, the nice thing is you've got, you know, with the one to ten, you, you've got that old hunting three to nine built right into it. It'll do three and it'll do nine and everything in yep. between. Um, I mean, they're super flexible, uh, but you know, like we talked about at shot show, it's, uh, it's a ton of compromise. It's a jack of all trades and a master of none. It's, yep. it's trying to be second best at everything. You know, it's not going to be as good as a red dot at 25 yards, and it's not going to be as good as a five to 25 at at 600 yards. No, so you're trying to do both of those things with one scope that are really like polar opposites of each other. And now I have this one scope, and I'm going to try to do everything with this one scope. It's um, a bipolar optic. 
Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, let me show you. Let me let me pull out my my one to ten here. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I'll show you. How, I'll show you how what I've got it set up on. You might be interested. Oh, <laughs> we got to talk about guns and optics. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> now, I know that this is AR fifteen podcast, but this I really like. The, oh, the Hellion, the yeah. the VHS. Yeah. Yeah. The camcorder. I really, really like this this rifle. It's really won me over. Um, this is an absolute combat rifle. Um, I got to go to Iwa, which just yep, ended yep. for this year, but but the big uh, shot show in Nuremberg, basically. It's like shot show with beer in the booths. Oh, fun. <laughs> hey, wait, yeah, they have that, they have that anyway. <laughs> so so um, weird, weird tangent real quick, but you know how at shot show all of the guns are are De um demilled or can't be used. De yeah they're deactivated right so nobody can s sneak in like a magpul d60 drum and throw it in a throw it in a, an ar and start spraying the place down because the ar won't won't shoot it right mm -hmm. at iwa in germany in nuremberg all of the guns are live they're real and ready to go because with the gun control laws they have their it's they think it's basically impossible for somebody to sneak ammunition on site because who would have ammunition <laughs> you know so like sure. don't worry about the firing pin all the guns got real firing pins in them they're ready to shoot but only the military has this stuff anyway so you know we don't really have to worry about it and i'm like i don't know if that's... okay <laughs> um i mean whatever they don't have to i i don't care that they're live they, they could be live at shot show and it wouldn't bother me it wouldn't bother me no it wouldn't bother me either of course, um, I do we're, get we're enough either, pointed we're either responsible or we're not. Well, and SHOT Show is one of those places for people who've never been. If you have never had a gun pointed at you. Uh, yeah. Go to SHOT Show. All day, every day. <laughs> all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's by the end of it, you're so immune to people pointing guns at you. <laughs> that... I was doing a I was doing a booth interview and I pointed an MP5 the MP5 with the advocate on it I pointed at the guy in the booth across the lane from us and he threw up his hands and surrender and I'm like <laughs> I had to go and apologize to him afterwards because I was in the middle of this booth yep. interview I wasn't no, thinking about where everybody was or whatever and yep. I just threw it up to demonstrate you know how fast it was yep. and got a sight picture right on this guy and he's like <laughs> I surrender I'm like oh shit. But um, but anyway, when I was at Iwa, I got to talk to the the Croatian guys who actually made this rifle, right? Yep. Um, cool. The real Croat designers of this thing, and dude, those guys are as serious as a first heart attack. This is not a rifle that they made, you know, for stupid Americans to spend too much money on because they like weird space guns. Um, they had no when they when they made this rifle, they had no inkling that it would ever be allowed to be imported into the U.S. They had no inkling that the U.S. civilian market would have any interest in it. They were like, "We need a super modern combat rifle now," and and they worked really really hard on this. And when you really when you shoot it and you take it apart and you look at how it's built and you look at the quality of the construction. It's basically an HK G36 in a in a in a bullpup chassis, and uh, it's beautifully made. Um, and oh, I've shot oh. I've shot like a case of ammo through it, and I still can't figure out where to clean it. I oil it, but it doesn't get dirty. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, um, and it's it's it was originally going to replace the FAMAS, I believe was it was just going to be they put it in for a French rifle, which, <laughs> I mean, the French are the French. Yeah. And, they they picked oh. a a terrible rifle. I don't know, Nick. The French are assholes. the The French picked the the, the French picked the Famas in like the seventies, though. So it was like yeah. you know, well then they, the future, you know, back back before then Star they did Wars the, came out. Then they did the F two thousand. And the it's mass fish. Yeah, which is yeah. which is even worse. And uh... <laughs> so so this. Oh. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. This has got the uh, so this is the Gideon one to ten. Since we're talking about one to tens, so you guys have seen this at shot, but nobody watching yep. has probably got any experience with it yet. Um, thirty-four millimeter main tube, so it's a chonky boy. It's 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 thirty-four millimeter yep. main tube instead of a thirty millimeter. So your front lens is twenty-eight millimeters wide instead of twenty-four. Um, this rear lens, I don't remember what the spec is on it, but it's also bigger. 
The reason to do that is because the eye box is better. So the problem with one to tens, it always like no matter how much money you spend, if it's a night force, if it's a vortex HD gen three, they all get tight at 10 X. And so does this one. It gets tight at 10 X too, but it's not as bad as some of the others because the internal lenses are a little bit bigger with that 34 millimeter main tube. Um, it's not as bad as, the, as some of the 30 millimeter ones. We're also doing a couple of one to eights that are in the 30 millimeter tube size, but they're not one to tens. They're just, they're, they're one to eights. One's a second focal plane. One's a first focal plane. I talked about that with you guys at shot too, yep. but it's illuminated. Um, the reticle in here is a BDC for five, five, six that goes with the, uh, it's a 50 yard zero. So 5,200 battle site zero, it gets you out to 600 yards. Um, I thought that was realistic. I wanted to keep it real. I didn't feel like, like there are reticles out there where they claim you can go to 800 yards with five, five, six with a, with a 55 grain. And I'm like, man, like if you're aiming at a barn door, you could put a dent in it, Yeah. but you need a really, really big target. You need a target that's as big as these curtains behind me. And you need to be okay with the fact that the round is spent and it's falling like a tossed brick. It makes noise. Yeah. It, you know, so like, I'm like, I, I think this with a 16 inch barrel, uh, it's, you know, it's a pretty, pretty handy. I don't know. I've got a weapon light over here, you yep. know, yep. crank it over to one X. That's a handy little package. You no, know, I can go like this instant sight picture. Yep. You know, like this, this, I would, this is flexible. This can get me from, from point blank inside the house with a, with a light on it all the way out to say 600 yards. Yeah. Um, the rifle itself is not that heavy, so I don't pay that much of a penalty by having the one to 10 up top. The only thing that's a little bit weird is that it's top heavy because on an AR you're used to, you know, look where my hand is on the handguard and where my hand is on fire control you'd be used to the scope being down here, right? So there's more weight kind of at the top of it. So like the weight balance is a little bit different than what I'm used to. But this is a heck of a heck of a setup, I think. Um, no, those are. And, you know, I think it uh, one thing to, to talk about there, you mentioned something that a lot of people won't realize. But there's another thing people don't realize. Like the thing I dislike the most about that rifle is uh, the fact that it did not come with a VZ grip. And the unique feature of VZ grips is they're machined from a solid block of G10, and G10 is great because it's durable and doesn't get slippery when covered with mud, blood, or sweat. The 17-degree grip angle and a wide variety of textures from mild to extreme as well as color options are available. 1911 grips for those of us who still love 45 AARP. With extreme customizability, standard slim palm swells, thumb notches, safety cuts, bottom profiles, and more. More than 25 textures and 27 colors are available, and this coupon code is good for 15% off all handgun and rifle grips, and that code is AR15PODCAST. Does VZ make AR15 grips? Yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. Guess what? This takes a standard AR15 grip. You could put a VZ on this. if it takes yep, But it doesn't yeah. come with one. <laughs> Good thing I no. can fix that myself. That might not be a bad exactly. idea. This yeah, this they, grip isn't bad, but it's not a VZ either. Hmm. Yeah, they they do make a VZ grip, and or VZ does make them, and they are awesome. They are fantastic. I like fun. I love mine because they're cheese graters yeah. and aggressive. Disgusting. And everyone everyone hates them, but me. Uh, you you mentioned one thing that got kind of glossed over there, and you mentioned it for iBox, and. 34 millimeter tubes so in uh in looking back at time like if we jump in the way back machine it used to be every scope had or you know had a one inch tube right and then good stuff like the really good stuff had 30 millimeters and then 34 millimeter came out and that was unheard of like weird oh night mm -hmm. force and mm -hmm. it was why are you doing this it was, oh it's for better light gathering you know that was always the excuse they used and i have i have a one to eight uh lpvo with a 34 millimeter tube that has the worst eye box i have ever had in an lpvo and it is 
from a company that does not make that optic anymore because it was hot garbage. And they are based in Tucson, Arizona, and they're a Brovet company. Oh, I'm trying to think. Now, now the wheels are turning. Ugh. Right on, yeah. man. Right on. Right on. Right. Oof. <laughs> right on, bro. Yeah. I yeah, I remember when they were the hotness for a second. Yep. But that that's one where I've seen kind of rise and fall and plateau back up. But the you say that that 34 millimeter tube is to provide a better eye box. Now is that, that because little bit. it helps a little bit? No. Is that because it actually allows more light to enter in back to that objective lens? Or is it just because it allows more focusing? It, it has to do, so I'm not an optical engineer. I wish I was sometimes. I wish I was that good at the math because um, it would help me with my job quite a bit. There's been multiple times I'm going to completely admit to you guys right now where I've had a wonderful idea and I've said things like, hey, you know those 1X prisms? How come we don't do a 1X prism that would go on a pistol? That'd be a great idea. And the real optical engineers kind of go, <laughs> that's not how light works. Um, <laughs> you know, that's totally not possible, Mike, but shoot idea. Shoot idea. Um, yeah, like, this would be great. Yeah. So the, so the, uh, so the mathematical formula for, exit pupil which is the diameter of the shaft of light that comes out the back of the optic right yep so um i can even try to demo that here in a minute but but there's a diameter of shaft of light that comes out the back of the scope and i have to light up my eye with that shaft of light or i don't get a sight picture in a traditional optic the cool thing about red dots is they don't have that um they don't have an exit pupil. You can you can swirl your eye all around, and as long as you can see the dot in like a corner of the optic, you can take a shot, and 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 you'll be likely to get a hit. That's the magic of red dots. Traditional so, optic. Is that also kind of what we refer to as parallax in a lot nope. of times? Completely oh, different, different, different deal. Exit pupil. Okay. Ex, yeah, exit pupil and parallax are are a whole different thing. See, that's so, I had to ask that because people no, are like, oh, that's the parallax thing. Yeah. <laughs> Parallax is a is a whole different deal. It has to do with focus. Um, yep. So, anyway, the 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 mathematical formula that I'm talking about, the basic mathematical formula is the diameter of your objective lens, in this case, 28 millimeters, divided by your magnification, in this case, 10, is going to give you roughly your exit pupil that comes out the back of that optic, which would be about two point, theoretically 2.8 millimeters, 28 millimeter objective lens time, you know, divided by 10 is 2.8. If it was a 24 millimeter objective lens, it'd be a 2.4 millimeter exit pupil. So, so the bigger, the bigger the objective lens is, the, again, this is really, really rough. The bigger the objective lens is, um, the, the more forgiving your eye box. Yeah, right. The more forgiving your eye box can be. Um, you never get that theoretical, that theory. It's, 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 there's, it's kind of like a, how you have like an engine in a car and the engine's supposed to make 390 horsepower. But by the time it actually goes through the transmission and the differential into the rear wheels, then you put it on a, you put it on a car on a, on a, on a dyno. And you're like, this is supposed to be 370 horsepower and it's 340 horsepower. Well, cause the, all the, the reduction for like 30 horsepower, right? It's kind of like that with these optics where theoretically I should have an exit pupil of 2.8, but in real life, it's like 2.4 or 2.5 or whatever. But basically you want a big number in exit pupil, the biggest number that you can get your hands on to make it the easiest to look through. And with variable optics, um, with variable optics, it varies. Let me see if I can show you this actually. It varies with magnification. So... Let's pull off Mr. Surefire here. I'm going to be real impressed if I can show this to you guys. <laughs> it's like a magnifying glass and an ant. Yeah, it's a mad scientist here. I, I, I like oh, where this is going. And this is also why with uh, with some of the things like looking back at, you know, going back to prism optics, I know that uh, I think you were the guy who hit me to this. And it's a fact I use when I teach classes to army guys. 
that there is only one prism site in the world that does not have a ocular adjustment and that is the acock because it was made for everyone who has 2020 vision okay so you have the spot on your shirt that we can see yeah so literally i've taken my i've taken my weapon light here and i'm just shoving my weapon light into this all right so i've got a spot on my shirt there it is can you see it yep that is the exit pupil at just about because you had an eye relief too so I, yep. my shoulder's about you know four inches away so that's about where my eye where my eye would be right so you can see the size of that right that's at one for those of you at home go ahead and like pinch and zoom or whatever um make make me full screen real quick there yeah. we go yep. all right so science so and there, math. Now watch what happens when i crank this over watch Oh, it stays. The, uh, See how there's a the little one in the middle. Yep. yep. The yeah. little one. The little one is the exit pupil. Okay. The there's like a ring around it because I'm overwhelming yep. it with light right now. But that little one, your eye has to line up with that to look through this scope. Okay. Now watch. I open this back up. Watch. You can see it. See how it started to shrink a little bit. Yep. yep. Right there. So as I change my magnification. I'm changing my my ability to easily look through this scope at the same time. So that's why these optics are super fast at one power. It's it's not as fast as a red dot, but it's super fast at one. And then at 10 power, they're really picky and and, and they get harder to look at. And they're all and they're all like that. So now here's the fun part. Yes, this is the same Gideon that JSD sells. Yay! So when we have your super cool Instagram long range 338 Lapua 1500 yard bad mama oh, jamma yeah. that's chambered for $10 bills, right? <laughs> and we have our awesome 25 or 30 power scope on there that costs more than a used 4x4. Four four. <laughs> what else do you see on those rifles? They always have, always, always without, without exception. They have one of those crazy hyper adjustable stocks where the receiver ends. Yep. And here's where your bolt is. And behind there is just this skeletonized mess of little screws and little shelves. And you can you can pull out the, the length and you can cant and, it. And you can foam have little, duct taped. You know, all that crap, right? What is all that? What is all that crap for? It's because on those high power optics, again, you can't beat this with money because physics is physics. You can't defeat the math. I wish you could. When you get behind that scope and you're trying to look through something 1,500 yards away at 25 power, that exit pupil is so small, your eye has to be in the same place every time. So you adjust that stock minutely to where you stick your head in the same place every time, your eye goes in the same place every time, and you can look through it faster without having to hunt for it and going, well, where, where the heck is it? I'm looking, for, you know, and you'll see guys in PRS guys will even have, um, they'll make, they'll, they'll take like resin or they'll take tape even, and they'll build up like a little bump or whatever. And you're like, why do you have a bump on your stock? It's to give them a reference an index. So when they come up every time they just know up oh, the bump goes right there yep, and it's my, for the consistency. I mean, my personal yeah. long range rifle has that where it's got the riser that comes up and then I actually have foam and tape and everything to give me a reference point and all that for exactly that reason you just described. Yep. Only you did it articulately and not like <laughs> monkey put <laughs> foam on because make shoot gooder. <laughs> and yeah, it's, why, why'd you do that? Well, it makes my eye look through it better. All right, whatever. You know why? Weirdo. <laughs> yeah, now you know why. You yeah, did the, you did the full explanation, which is amazing. And uh, we have talked a lot about what makes things and that like that one to 10, you know, that is an amazing optic. I did not realize that was a 34 millimeter, even when we looked at it at shot, because, well, at shot, you know, things kind of get glossed over because, well, there's beer in the booths and <laughs> it, 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 it turns into well. a blur. I know it gets blurry. <laughs> And you know, you start talking, and it's, hey, I'm I'm more interested in catching up with a buddy of mine 
and then be like, oh, that's neat. Okay, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> and then, then... <laughs> now, you know, Mike, while you were going through your, your presentation there, I was uh, scouring the internet, just checking out other one to 10 prisms out there. And I got to say, you guys are, are killing it on price point because the closest guy is, is a good friend of ours with the show and stuff as well. But man, any, anywhere from 250 to $100 difference. And I think you guys have a great price point out there for anyone who's looking for an awesome optic. Again, like I said, I'll be purchasing a few myself just because I I, I believe in your guys' product and I, I want to see you guys succeed. So thank you for doing that because as new shooters at, coming into the industry every day, this is the scope you guys should be checking out. You should be checking out their, their 1 to 10s and their prisms and their pistol optics because they're fantastic. Now, the one thing that we should mention quick because we've – We've talked about this and and we've mentioned a little bit. I know that we love like we're Prism and LPVO guys, hundred percent we are. Yep. Um, like across the board, I think all three of us are, and we'll say that. <laughs> you know. Uh, like I like a dot. I have dots. They're great. Dots do dot things. A, a dot on glass uh, makes a dot, and it kind of looks like Africa. But <laughs> you know, as yeah, as I get a we bow tie, move, I never see like a crisp three moa. I get like a like a bow tie. Yeah, or a star, or oh, a star of David. Yep, one hundred percent. Um, now the reticle on. So I want to talk a little bit about the Advocate Micro Prism. Please do. I've been waiting so, all night. Yeah, this is the one that Garth is actually most excited for. Yes, I so, am. Micro Prism. I do not have one. Oh, we gotta fix that. Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll go for that. So Micro Prisms are one of my favorites because they're the size of a red dot but the functionality of a prism and i love prisms now the one thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna share the screen here for our listeners you know who are viewing right now and uh this is one of the simplest reticles i have seen because it is not yes. it's a chevron or a triangle triangle yeah it, you know like i i know that ACOG calls it a chevron and i'm like no it's a carrot but it's a but it's a triangle in a a quartered donut and yeah super that, simple the the top of that triangle is the center point so it's not like a triangle in the center but the the very tip of the triangle is the center point and the triangle comes down from there if you look close you can see the whole triangle is just sitting a little bit low yep just a little bit low Yep. Um, and yeah. Is, is there a reason for that? So, yeah. I mean, the reason is, is that, so I, on ARs, like on a 5.56 AR, I like to run a, the 5200 battle size zero, right? Yep. Which that's just the way that I am. There's other guys that are like, you know, Gunny told me 36 yards. Fine. That's cool. Do your thing. <laughs> We're good. Um, 25 for meters. Me, yeah. Right. Yeah. They got meters beaten into them. Uh, that's cool too. I, I, I can speak meters. That's cool. Um, but I'm a 5200 oh, guy. That's we came up with a, a new uh, way to refer to this, and we call it the Yeeter. Oh yeah, yep. And it's it's that distance between a yard and a meter. It's heavy <laughs> heavy on the ish. So yeah. Like, what is it? Well, we do the 5250 Yeeter. Yeah, the over yonder. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so. Um, so if I'm running like a 5200 battle site zero, I want to be able to try to get a hit at 200 yards with an unmagnified prism scope. Now, the cool thing is about the new generation of 1X prism scopes is that you can run them with magnifiers. You can put a 3X magnifier behind it and it'll actually work, um, which wasn't true even a couple of years ago. No, not at all. Um, yeah, when, when I was with Swamp Fox, we tried really hard to get the Blade 1X prism to work with magnifiers in it. It it wasn't going to happen, and um, I won't even get into why. But it just it, it wouldn't work with that generation. There's a new generation of prism scopes. Primary Arms has them. Swamp Fox have them. We have them, and they're they're based on basically a new generation of optical designs, which is the science of the shape of the lenses and their mathematical relationship to each other. And with with the new optical design, you can use a three X mag behind one of these things. So knowing that, I'm like, I want a really fine 
a really fine point of aim for accuracy work. So if I'm going to zoom in at 3x with a magnifier or I, I would run shoot a really, really precise shot, I'll use the tip of that triangle and make the most precise shot that I possibly can if I'm willing to take the time to make the most precise shot possible. If I'm not, if I'm just in a hurry and I'm like in PCC land yeah. and I have like a nine millimeter PCC with an eight inch barrel and I'm just like that sucker's zeroed in at 50 yards and anything from point blank to 75 i'm just gonna hold it and go then i'm not really gonna like take my time to like treat it like a sniper rifle with the with the tip of my little chevron i'm gonna hold that big honking triangle right on the plates on the plate rack and i'm gonna go ding 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 and i'm gonna knock knock plates over right yep. um, which is like i said i've got mine on my shotgun i'll go fast it's a yeah it's a plate rack eating machine <laughs> i mean it destroys plate racks i love it um, you know, so, uh, congratulations. You just, uh, made me sell my, my EOTech, um, because the, the, I liked it for in the house because of the, the donut reticle and the ability to put a magnifier behind it. Mm -hmm. If I could actually run a proper, like now that I know that I could, yep. uh, I have no purpose for an EOTech. With the crisp reticle instead of having the astigmatism -y, grainy yeah. stuff going on, yeah. you get the graininess with EOTechs with your eyes. Yes. 100 percent it's it's like why is this so expensive it looks like hot garbage and they go oh you just get used to it man <laughs> okay. i mean that's that's true yes and no like if you're shooting and you're in a hurry and uh oh hey an alpha yay uh plates are coming we have plates on the way they're they're a thing um mos to acro and rmr to acro so we can put the mediators on uh on on couple different things that's we're working on that that's going to happen you're always working on the next thing if you're if you're not working on the next <laughs> thing you're falling behind um but yeah like here's the other here's the other secret about about that reticle so the illumination technology is we have an etched reticle it's chemically etched and it's basically painted with like silver reflective paint okay that faces you Yep. And then we're going to take an emitter, kind of like on a red dot, where you have an e a red dot emitter that throws light forwards and it reflects off the glass. And that's what makes your red dot. Kind of the same thing on this reticle illumination, where the emitter throws light towards the, the reticle. The silver paint from the reticle reflects it back, and that's why you see green or red or whatever. Um, but the more paint you get in the reticle, the brighter it looks. If it's super thin and fine in a tiny little line there's not much paint in there so most of the light that gets thrown at it is wasted and only a little bit of it reflects back and so again with my whole philosophy on this i was like look i'm not gonna do a bdc reticle and a ranging reticle and all the fancy pants stuff i'm like eh. if i'm taking like a 400 yard shot and i need a bdc i brought the wrong gun that day like garth said we can have more than one of these things right yeah so, right. so I don't need like a friggin' BDC reticle in 1X Prism. What I want is something bold, bright, and in my face going, here, put this thing on the thing you want to poke holes in. And like the faster it is, the happier I am. And all the fancy stuff, like I said earlier about being honest about what your needs are, right? Um, yeah. Do you really need to know if a standard... 18 and a half inch size target is 400 yards away or 350 yards away when you're with a one X for no. me. No, no. I just, especially if it's PCCs and shotguns and, and this up close stuff, I don't, I don't need all that crap. I just need a point and shoot, bring it up to my shoulder. And it's like super obvious where the thing is pointed. And I just drive from target to target and I haul ass. Right. Mm -hmm. um, let me show you mine real quick. Cause you can get the idea of the size. Yeah. And while he's doing that, here's your fun fact of the day that no one cared, asked for or wanted. On an M16 or M4 series rifle, the front sight post is 18 inches across at 300 meters. Ooh, I didn't know that. That's awfully handy. Yeah, th that's a thing you know now. So, <laughs> so here's a swampy boy. This is from my Swamp Fox days. I still have a lot of Swamp Fox stuff in my reference collection. From I this That's a Liberator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Swamp Fox Liberator. 
I have one this on an AK. The, uh, your aim point T1, aim point T2, micro dot size. There's like friggin' a thousand red dots this size on the market right now, right? Yep. yep. And then here, he hits his table and everything gets shaky. There is the Gideon 1X prism scope. It's really not significantly larger. Ooh, that is the same size. It's yeah. not significantly larger than than the aim point size, than the T1, T2 slash micro dot size. Let me show you now. I've got a chamber flag in this thing. Okay. Yep. So we're not we're not pointing at them. You can see how big that glass is in the front. Yep. And let me wake you up real quick. There you are. Just for kicks and giggles. Let's see what happens. Oh, there I saw it. Yep, there. See how bright that is? Yeah. That's, that's actually my, lucky me, it's pointed at my dry fire samurai. Um, that's <laughs> my that's my samurai that I use for dry fire. He's up against a brick wall, external wall of the house. But that's, that's the actual sight picture. Now, we were talking about exit pupil, right? And how yep. hard it is to look through one of these things at 10x. Look how much I can move around my friggin' cell phone. My This is my webcam, dudes. Yeah. Look how much I can no, move that around and that still is, get a reusable sight picture. I'm doing that this is with, awesome. my, with my webcam. I mean, it's ridiculously easy to look through. And it's it's super light, super small. doesn't take up a lot of room on this shotgun. And, man, it's like this is like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, Beretta 1301. Uh, semi-auto with a with a one X prism scope on it. This this thing is amazing. I'm not gonna lie, it twitched a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, so for the money did... that you spend, you can buy like three of those for an EOTech. Yep. Yeah. We we did have this question pop up uh, from Royce. I've mm. recently seen a couple magnifiers that mount forward of prism lenses. What's the difference in something like that? Okay. So, so good question. I like that. Uh, so, I saw that before with like older stuff. Mm -hmm. It's 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 almost a question of personal preference, um, but you also have to you also need the hardware to work for you. Okay, so mm, you grab an AR. I don't actually have my three X handy. I don't know what happened to it, but we're so, gonna that one. There we go. So we're going to simulate. We're going to say this is my 3X, right? So if I put my 3X behind my dot, what happens is, is that my eye is closer to the 3X magnifier. So I don't have very much eye relief. Um, I'm going to be right up next to that 3X magnifier if I'm doing like nose to charging handle shooting, right? Yep. Yep. Um. And, and a lot of magnifiers, especially the old school magnifiers, were built that way. Like, you had to crawl inside them. You had to be one inch behind that magnifier to see through it, right? That was, like, the older generation of magnifiers. Oh, yeah. When the magnifier is in this position, the light hits the, light hits the reticle first and then is magnified by the 3X. So when I put my 3X magnifier behind, behind my red dot, it's going to magnify everything, including the reticle size of the of of the dot so like say i have a 3moa dot in here which i do 3moa is always 3moa is always 3moa so the dot still covers three inches at 100 yards okay but it's gonna look bigger because my field of view is cut i'm zoomed in three times mm -hmm. and you're aiming you're aiming with this thing going holy crap this thing looks like a like i'm aiming with a basketball yep. um because it's because it has been magnified as well as your entire field of view and everything else, right? Yep. So if I have a new generation magnifier that has a much more forgiving uh, eye relief, kind of like the 1X prisms, I can put it in front like this, and you see how far away my head would be from that scope? Yes. With the old magnifiers, I couldn't look through it at all. I wouldn't get a sight picture. It wouldn't work, right? Mm -hmm. So this would this wasn't an option before, because now my head's like, if 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 my... You know, if my nose is where the charging handle is, I'm like six inches away from the back of this optic. Yep. yep. But if with a new generation magnifier, 
if I do that and I put it in front here, I can still see through everything. And then the benefit, if I choose, if I want to do it this way, is that the field of view is magnified, but the dot is not magnified because the light that comes through this comes in after the magnification is already done. So I'm shooting with my original dot size. It looks like a 3M OE dot. It's consistent. It's the same size dot that I'm used to um, and, all, and all that stuff. And I don't have to have like giant dot, small dot, depending on whether I've got my magnifier flipped over or not. Some people like that. Some people prefer it. And it's now possible with the, with the, with the new 3X mags. I'm kind of old school where I don't mind if the whole thing is, is magnified because that's what I'm used to. But it's like a personal preference thing. So that's that's my take on it. That's why that's a thing and it didn't used to be a thing. Hmm. So that, that sense, is well, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. And that is a ton of good information to have. Like, yeah. So that is I don't think either one of them I don't think either one of them is like a deal breaker or one of them is super superior. And you know, if you do it the old style way, you're a loser and you're you know, no, nah, I'm not I'm not buying I'm not buying that. I think it's personal preference. You can go either way and, and shoot equally well. Yeah. Yeah. It well, it comes down to kind of how you want to mount it up and how things work for you. It might even be how much rail space you have. Yeah. Because like for me, if I'm running a dot, I like to have my dot set a little bit forward sometimes just so I can see more, depending upon the uh, situation, because like some of the old school dots are actually called see more. Because if you're shooting yep. it with both eyes open and all that, and then flipping that over, then it's, oh, okay, now, you know, again, you have it back in that kind of eye box where you needed to have it before. And that's just how I learned how to run them. Right. And I am a creature of habit. So, yeah, we all are. We all are. Um, and whether we want to admit it or not, we all, we all have habits. We all have our personal preferences. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time on, discussions you know like i'm 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 i try to keep my thumb on what's going on in the world of optics you know i i don't want to be the last guy to find out on stuff so i spent a lot of time in like facebook groups and on reddit and uh you know in forums and uh, watching right. youtube and stuff. school of the internet it man like guys stop breaking each other down we're all on the same <laughs> team here for pete's sake you know, uh, everybody's got, oh, the, you know, this is the way that I was taught by, by my uncle. And he knows all about guns because he used to be a cop and everybody, everybody else is wrong. And I'm like, stop, just stop, stop. <laughs> as the you guy who trains, guy as the guy who trains guys in the army, don't listen to someone just because they were in the army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, it's, there's so much to do with that. And I think the biggest thing is educating yourself about one what your optics are capable of mm -hmm. and the easiest way to do that is a way that might shock a lot of our listeners so you could uh when you get your optic you'll have it you know and it comes out and has this really cool little box and then inside of it there's this paper thing <laughs> and if you, read, very hard on you. if you read that it will actually teach you so much about what it is instead of being like huh yeah neat okay you know like you look through and do the all right um i guess i just need to know the torque specs and i'll figure it out from here <laughs> and actually the one takeaway i have if you have stuck with us this long the most important piece of equipment or tool you can buy for any weapon you have that you're going to put optics on is an inch pound driver yeah i mean i'm biased because i'm installing optics all the time hmm. taking them off putting them on swooping around um but man they're not that expensive and it's gonna help so freaking much spend the 20 bucks on a on a wheeler fat wrench and uh don't crush your tubes blue thread locker is your friend <laughs> you, you 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 put this stuff yeah there we go and a dab of blue javelin fangs i'm right there with you put yep. just a little line of this stuff i've got it on youtube go to go to the gideon optics youtube and you'll see me doing install videos and stuff 
It does and, take a while to set. I wouldn't, you know, do it the night before you hit the range. Don't do it the morning of the range session. Um, let it set. Let it do its job. But yeah, I would rather have. Work. I would rather have a fastener. I would rather have a fastener at twenty inch pounds with blue thread locker than forty inch pounds and no blue thread locker. Well, especially, well I know that especially on I've these. Had, I've had scopes, and customers have brought them into me. And they use what I like to call uh, Gooden type German specs. Gooden type. Yeah. And uh, when they do that, they will uh, put that on and go, all right, you know, I, I, well, I, I said, oh, did you torque it? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I made sure it was tight. And they will grab a hold and just torque it down as hard as they can. Yeah. Crazy and, monkey strength. Yeah. And, and then they go, well, why did it come loose? Well, see, here's a here's an interesting physics thing. When you have metal and you put too much torque on that, it'll actually loosen up faster because it, it lengthens the metal and it does ungood things. Now, if you put it to where like manufacturer specs say they should be, things have a weird way of working because it's almost like they were designed that. And you find those specs in the manual. Dude, I just had a great idea, Nick. You should start reading the gun books and then record them and then sell them as audio. Make it an audible. Yes. Yeah. Nick Dooley, <laughs> audible.com. Uh, He's going to read you the user. You're, you're going to read them anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. As I sit here. Let me, let me show you guys uh, something real quick. So empty gun, empty gun. Empty yep. gun. Empty gun, empty gun. Because um, I'm probably going to point this thing at myself, so. Um, this is, I'm doing a full review of this on the Gideon YouTube channel. What happens when an optics company reviews a pistol? We've all seen pistol guys review optics. I'm like, screw that. I want to do the, I want to do it backwards. I want to have an optics review a pistol. So I got this, this ugly little T-Sauce and I freaking love it. It's amazing for the money. Um, ridiculous. Like if this thing said Ruger on the side, boomers would be lining up at Cabela's to get on the wait list. I don't know right? what you're talking about. But it, but it says, it says T-Sauce and nobody knows anything about them. So, so, um, which is what interested me because it's kind of like Gideon. Oh, who are these guys? How good could it possibly be for a couple hundred bucks? Well, it's pretty freaking good. Um, but you might see, see that orange in there. Yeah. Yes. That is fingernail polish. That fingernail polish is bridging my screws and the optic body. So when I go to strap this thing on in the morning, uh, or I go to competition, or I go to the range, and I'm going to check and make sure that my reticle is on. Come on, reticle. There we go. There you go. Yep. Little green circle dot in there. As I'm checking that that thing's on and ready to go, I'm going to look and make sure that these are the way that I left them. If if this little bridge of orange is has been moved, it means these screws are backing out, and that means I need to I need to take a halt to it, retighten them, shoot another gun, or whatever. That is um, really fancy witness marks. Yeah, yeah, really fancy witness marks done with really fancy uh, fingernail polish that I buy the day after Halloween on Super Duper Sale. <laughs> I like it. Yep. I approve this message. So that's, that's what we call a pro tip right there, kids. Yep, pro tip. Yeah. <laughs> so, Garth, do you have any more questions for Mike? I know that we've been holding them up here. We're getting uh, pretty far into the show, so it's. I was just saying we could we could let him go because, well, everyone has stuff and life. Dude, no, so I can talk about this stuff all night long, boys. I love Mike it. covered exactly what I wanted to hear about the, the one-time prism because that's, again, what I was most excited about, so... Well, I do think that uh, we will uh, probably get off the air for a little bit, and then we'll visit with you just a little bit after we get off, but uh, about having you on again soon. Yep. Because every time you come on, it is an amazing knowledge dump, and uh, honestly, our listeners have, have all loved it because, well, I love vomiting information, and you do it about optics, which is great because I get to learn stuff then, too. And uh, earlier we had someone comment up here that we went from Bill Knight, a science guy, to Planet of the Ipe, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, apes strong together. Apes strong right. together. Or, <laughs> yeah. But 
you know, it's, it's, that's, uh, that's where we're at because it's, we're all about teaching people here and, and learning things. And no matter what you're doing with, with a rifle, you need sights on it. Like, I don't care if you're just trying to do the, I'm going to instinctively aim down the side of this, which I have seen people do at the range because they don't think about things like sights. Anyway, that makes me sad. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, we're talking about M16A4s. Have you ever done the uh, the short stocking A4? Uh, um, yep, where you pull up and shoot with it at your like face, like this. Yeah, like this yeah. for CQ. Yes. I mean, like I, I've I've done it. I I I I know what distance I'm good to with it. <laughs> it's not very far. I mean, if I had to, I could, but. So I'll bring something else that day. I I went to Iraq with an A2, and nice. then I traded the A2 for a full size saw. So learning how to move stuff around in a cab and shoot in unconventional positions. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I got to write the book on that. <laughs> Man, I I respect anybody that toted a belt fed in the in the <laughs> desert. Like next time we meet, the beer's on me, my friend. I'll buy. Because yeah, wow. I- I carried one of those for 18 months. <laughs> Jeez, how's your back? Uh, uh, I came back an inch and a half shorter than when I left. Are you serious? Yes. yes. Oh, my God. We'll talk more about that later. But <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. BA has determined this is not service related. <laughs> 100%. Like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Jeez. But, uh, Garth, do you have anything you want to add tonight before we start to sign off? Yeah, actually. Uh, one thing we haven't talked about tonight, Nick, we probably should. We should talk about Patriot Patch. PatriotPatch.co for all your cleaning mat needs, for all your pop culture patches. Guys, they have a Patch of the Month Club. Definitely go check uh, Jacob out at uh, PatriotPatch.co. Please support them. Again, they are pretty much the godfather of the network. I mean, they nice. kind of started the whole thing. And not to mention, they're a South Dakota-based company currently, and we love those guys at Patriot Patch. So go check those guys out at patriotpatch.co. Yes, patriotpatch.co. You can join the Patch of the Month Club where you can get something like that. No skill. All luck, no skill. <laughs> and my That's leprechaun fun. with the uh, – Dual MP5s. Yes. So, Mike, uh, is there? Tell everyone where they can find Gideon Optics and you and all of the latest stuff on that. So, uh, GideonOptics.com is the company website. We do sales there. You can buy straight off of GideonOptics.com. Um, we are also at Optics Planet. If you want to wait for shipping for a minute, um, uh, we are at Aim Surplus. Brian at Aim Surplus carries them. Uh, there are a few other places. Um, we have just started up on Amazon, I believe. So cool. we're trying to get Amazon started up. Um, and on social media, I just started a Facebook page, but Facebook is for old folks with white beards. Um, we are on Instagram at Gideon Optics. Instagram. <sighs> we are on Twitter at Gideon Optics. I'm cross posting Instagram stuff there. Um, so really the, 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 the Instagram is the most active and you can see what we're working on, what our projects are, uh, hints of the new things, what the latest YouTube is and, and all that stuff. And uh, if anybody's got any questions, uh, there's a question from Royce on FFP versus SFP. Dude, that's a whole other podcast. We could do FFP versus SFP for an entire podcast, but if anybody has questions about Gideon products, um, what do we have? Uh, what do we make? What does it fit? What is it for? You can email me at Mike at Gideonoptics.com and I will actually answer you myself. I don't mind that at all. Yes. Yep. Doesn't help if it's all oily for sure. Yeah. So yeah, get it's it's pretty pretty easy, guys. Just Gideon Optics, Google it up, go to Gideonoptics.com. You can see everything that we make. It's a bunch of pistol dots, one uh one prism. And one LPVO right now with two more LPVOs coming. We got, we got big pistol dots. We got little pistol dots. We didn't even talk about that stuff tonight. Um, I got, I got big pistol dots. I didn't want to, I didn't want to buy an SRO, so we made one for a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> we've got, we've got little pistol dots. 
that even go on revolvers. Oh, but, man. Uh, it's ready, man. It's ready Taurus. On my Instagram, on, on the company Instagram at Gideon, I have a video of me shooting this double action only at 50 yards. Cool. Yeah, you, you know how, you know, you know how oh, those revolvers are just belly guns. You know, it's a get off me gun. Yeah, this is a 50 yard gun with a dot on it. That's yeah. pretty bad. So, anyway, that's where you can, you can find all our stuff and see where all the action is. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Mike, for coming on. And, uh, I'm just going to go out there and say this is not the last time you've heard from Mike or Gideon Optics with us. No. We uh, we always enjoy having him on and uh, learning, and we will definitely have him on again in the future. Uh, guys, be looking out. We have some exciting stuff coming out. We're going to have the uh, a 308 battle coming up. Um, yep. We're going to be doing some very interesting testing with that because we have two brand-new factory 308s that uh, we're going to start testing side by side to see who does better. Yep. Nice. So uh, be Super ready for stoked. that. Will it be Poverty Pony or will it be the Palometto State? So we'll figure that out. <laughs> and uh, guys, uh, again, look us up on all the places, you know, anywhere podcasts are found. And then, uh, you know, Air 15 2.0 on Instagram, Air 15 2 on Air 15 Podcast 2 on the Twitter or X, the artist formerly known as Twitter, whatever you want to say. Yeah, I still call it Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Elon. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the artist formerly known as Twitter. I <laughs> um, but uh, guys, with that, remember if you want to uh, just drop us a line, AR15 Podcast 2.0 at gmail.com. And uh, well, you folks out there, you stay safe and stay armed. Support the people who support the show. Primary Arms, VZ Grips, 4Patriots.com, and Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to check us out on social media. AR15 Podcast 2.0 on Instagram. AR15 Podcast 2.0 on YouTube. AR15 Podcast 2 on Twitter. AR-15 Podcast on Facebook and wherever podcasts are found. If you just want to drop us a line, let us know how we're doing, or give us a show idea, make sure to send that email to AR-15 Podcast 2.0 at gmail.com.